Someone or something attempts to exercise unrighteous dominion over anyone else, it lays the foundation for revolt and rebellion. The Berlin Airlift, an operation carried out by the British and American Air Forces to provide food and other essential items to post-war Berlin. It was a momentous event based on the revolutionary idea of providing humanitarian aid through air and air alone for the first time in U.S. history. This revolutionary political and humanitarian event produced reactions across the globe. Relations between the U.S. and Russia were strained for many decades to come, and it reformed world politics. The Berlin Airlift set the stage for a protracted Cold War. In 1945, the big question of what to do with Germany arose again. At the heart of this question lay Berlin. At the Potsdam Conference in the summer of 1945, the Allies set out to divide Germany into four zones of occupation governed by the US, Great Britain, the Soviet Union, and France. Berlin, which was inside the Russian zone, was also divided into four sectors. According to Russian historian Tatiana Koplova, despite their initial cooperation, the relationship between the great powers was shrouded by mistrust and suspicion. What was considered self-defense by one was interpreted as aggression by the other. By August 1945, most of Eastern Europe lay inside what Winston Churchill called the Soviet sphere, much to the alarm of the Western Allies. The two emerging superpowers, the US and Russia, differed in their ideologies. While the US promoted capitalism and democracy, Russia was intent on spreading communism. In 1947, President Truman reacted to the rising leftist tendencies in Europe by declaring the Truman Doctrine. Russia saw the Truman Doctrine of communist containment as a serious threat to its political ambitions. Beyond these ideological differences, there were important economic interests that drove the rift. Marshal Zhukov said, We have fought long and hard. We have captured Berlin. We have the moral and legal right to take out as much as we can in reparations. The Marshall Plan, conceived and overseen by George C. Marshall, was a particular example of this economic rift. It was probably the most significant and popular American policy initiative in the post-war years. It aimed a long-term economic recovery of Europe by providing financial aid to rebuild war-torn countries. There was a catch. The countries accepting aid had to agree to trade with each other, accept a capitalist economy, and their currencies would be tied to the American dollar, boosting American economy. In 1953, George Marshall was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for his contributions. Stalin perceived the Marshall Plan to be a capitalist plot and economic imperialism on the part of the US. He viewed it to be a potent weapon against the spread of communism. The Russians reacted with anger and rejected aid for Eastern Europe. The consolidation of the Allied zones with the intention to form a West German state and the successful currency reform in the Western zones further undermined Russian interests in the region. Stalin, who already felt isolated, could no longer postpone his reaction. On June 24, 1948, Russia imposed a blockade on West Berlin. Trains, boats, and road transport were stopped. The power supply cut. Their aim was to force the West Berliners to succumb to pressure as they were no longer be able to depend on the Allies for their supplies. Stalin expected the Western Allies to relinquish West Berlin. Berlin had no other option but to appeal to the world. Learned from the from the radio, which we always listen to the news and newspapers that was broadcast very, very widely and then of course everybody started wondering what are we going to do we're going to start truman refused to withdraw u.s troops as they would have undermined the doctrine of containment using force to liberate the city would result in another war so the western allies turned their hopes to the sky on june 26 1948 the berlin airlift commenced as they flew into west berlin the c-47s plane the size of a school bus 
carried two tons of supplies each. But even the entire fleet of C-47s carrying 80 tons of food, milk, and medicine was not enough to feed a population of 2.5 million people, as had previously been done by land transport. The Russians and the Americans at the time both believed that the city could only be supplied by rail for the amount of materials that were needed. The Russians just laughed. That can't be done. What is he going to do? How is he going to airlift? Then, on June 30th, much larger planes, the C-54s, arrived from U.S. bases all over the world. These could carry 10 tons of supplies each. The larger planes were a huge factor in helping West Berlin to be supplied by air alone. The airlift was initially expected to last a few days or at most a few weeks, but it lasted an entire nine months feeding a big city with supplies and keeping it from starvation. At the peak of the airlift operations, a plane landed in Berlin every 90 seconds to deliver supplies, a revolutionary feat indeed. In all, 2.3 billion tons of food were delivered during this airlift, an astonishing amount for those times. As a comparison, the Berlin airlift brought in more supplies in one month than the entire airlift operations in Sarajevo in five years. The airlift spanned the winter months too. The November and December skies were often dense with dark clouds and fog, which made the task more difficult. But the steady drone of airplanes continued through these months. The airlift also changed the relationship between the two former enemies into a genuine friendship. As the airlift progressed, the West Berliners began to trust the Allies and started helping in the operations. When the aircraft did not have enough runways to land on, residents ran out and laid steel mats, which were covered with tar, for the aircraft to land. The airlift, as with any military mission, was not without its perils. As the Russians tried various measures against the airlift, accidents happened and lives were lost. The Soviets buzzed some of our planes with fighter planes, put up barrage balloons, and occasionally they shined high-powered searchlights in their eyes during the approach to landing. One of the most well-known humanitarian acts during the airlift was by Colonel Gail Halverson, later called the Candy Bomber. Watching children waiting patiently for air supplies, he got an idea to drop candy. Over the next several months, over 22 tons of candy were dropped over Berlin. Everybody's talking, talking about the candy man. As one resident put it, that parachute was something more important than candy. It represented hope. Hope that someday we would be free. The airlift was a tremendous and unexpected success. On May 12, 1949, the Russians lifted the blockade. The world reacted with celebration. In the final analysis, the airlift was a gamble by the Allies that an economically weak Russia would not risk a full-scale conflict. The Russians could have shot down the planes or imposed a tighter blockade. Both would have led to a war. They did neither, and the Allies won the gamble. The success of the airlift stopped communism spreading west. The airlift, unfortunately but unavoidably, drew a line in the sand, launching the Cold War. The airlift divided Europe, and indeed the world itself, into two power blocks, the communist bloc led by the Soviet Union and the democratic bloc led by the US. A nuclear arms race soon ensued. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, was created on April 4, 1949, to boost the collective security of Europe and the US. In turn, on May 14, 1955, the Eastern Bloc reacted to the integration of West Germany into NATO with the Warsaw Pact. The airlift and the Marshall Plan also helped in forging an economic alliance among the European countries, leading to the formation of the European Union. In 1961, East Germany built the Berlin Wall that demarcated communism from democracy for the next 28 years. The political and economic rift between the two superpowers was now complete. In 1989, the Berlin Wall crumbled. With the fall of the Soviet Union, Germany was united once more. The Berlin Airlift was a pioneering military coalition-led effort that not only saved lives, but also led to the snowballing of world events. The airlift also set a model for future aid missions and added a new role for military forces, humanitarian aid. The largest humanitarian effort in U.S. Air Force history, it was unprecedented in scale and scope for its time.